What's up everyone, welcome back to Fibbin Time with T. Now I know the title of this video is Complete Axolotl Care Guide, but right now there's a few things I wanna get out of the way first. First, I wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel and watched my video. It means a lot to me. I've been wanting to start this YouTube channel for well over a year now. Second, I just wanna say that I am not an expert on oxalotls. Actually, six months ago, I didn't even know that they existed. I actually acquired my first oxalotl Bali. Um, I acquired him through my cousin. She was going out of town and she had three oxalotls that she needed someone to care for while she was gone. When she came back to town, she told me that I could pick which one I wanted to keep. I decided on Bali. Soon after, I decided that this is one of the coolest animals I have ever owned. Anyways, I don't want to bore you guys with my backstory. Let's get straight into this video. First, we're going to start off with a couple facts about oxalotls. What are they? Where do they come from? Ella decided she wanted to join me in this video, but anyways, an axolotl is a salamander that essentially never leaves its larval state meaning that it's essentially a tadpole for its entire life. And they actually reach sexual maturity in this state of its larval form, allowing it to breed in this form. Axolotls are most closely related to the tiger salamander. Their scientific name is Ambistoma mexicana. Axolotls can grow up to about 12 inches and they can also live up to about 15 years. Axolotls in the wild are actually only found in one lake in the entire world and it's located in current day Mexico City. I'm gonna butcher the name of this lake so I have it written down over here. It is Lake Sochi Milko. Axolotls today are actually considered functionally extinct. This is largely due to human activity within the city. There's also a couple other reasons like invasive species being added to the lake such as tilapia, which tilapia will eat the young oxalotls and it'll also eat their eggs and make the oxalotls compete for food. Pollution from the city also plays a huge role. The number of axolotls today are largely in the pet trade. This is also due to the fact that axolotls can lay huge clutches of eggs, sometimes up to a thousand eggs. Axolotls are largely used in science because axolotls have the ability to regenerate almost every part of their body, even parts of their brain. Back in the 90s, I believe, there was a gene that was introduced to axolotls in the science field called GFP, that stands for green fluorescent protein. This was introduced to the axolotls to help scientists study the regeneration of limbs. This gene allows them to glow under a black or blue light. They actually got the gene from jellyfish. Now, while axolotls are cool and cute and all that, they're also well known for making a huge mess. They love to eat and they love to poop. Now, axolotls actually have like little, almost human-like looking poops, which makes it really easy to suck them out with a turkey baster like this. Obviously, I suggest having a designated turkey baster. I keep it in this little cup right here just so nobody gets confused. Now to help maintain water quality and keep the nitrate levels low in your aquarium, I suggest a 15 to 30% water change every one to two weeks. I like to pick a day and just stick to that routine. So I do mine every Thursday. I'll do a 15% water change. I'm actually gonna play a clip of me doing my water change over this video. Now axolotls, while they do have legs and feet, it's actually pretty hard for them to move, especially if they're on a bare bottom setup. So they don't like a lot of current in their water because they're not able to hold on to anything. So for a filter, I suggest a sponge filter, which is just a little sponge that an airline hooks up to. So you're gonna need an air pump. It adds bubbles coming out of the top, which helps keep oxygen in the water. And it also adds just the right amount of surface irritation to keep your axolotl happy and healthy. Your axolotls do need some sort of hide in their tank, probably a few of them, as they do like to hide sometimes. They will come out. They also will appreciate some nice, fluffy, fake plants without any sharp edges, as their skin is very permeable and they will get cut by anything that's sharp in the tank. They kind of like to sit there and hold on with one foot and kind of just float in midair. Now we're gonna talk about substrate. If you wanna keep your axolotl on substrate, 
that's fine. But you need to make sure that it is a very, very, very fine sand as your axolotl will try to eat anything it can fit in its mouth. So if it eats the substrate, it needs to be able to pass the substrate. Otherwise, you're probably gonna have a dead axolotl. I personally like using a bare bottom substrate. I used to use sand. Sand is very hard to clean up, especially with a substrate vacuum because it also likes to get sucked into the vacuum. So it's just a lot easier to keep the tank clean and it's a lot easier to spot clean with that turkey baster I showed you with a bare bottom. As soon as I see any poop in there, I suck it out. And it also leaves no risk of impaction for your animal. The last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to your axolotl's aquarium is temperature. Axolotls do best in water that is 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything over 70 degrees will quickly be fatal to your axolotl. If your house is too warm and your water is too warm, you can achieve a lower water temperature with an aquarium fan. Um, they're pretty expensive. It's actually called an aquarium chiller. Um, a lot of people will just use a screen top like I do and they'll just buy a little fan and set it on top and that's a lot cheaper method. Uh, some people will even freeze water bottles and just float them in their water just to get the temps down if it's a really hot day. Now, when it comes to feeding your axolotl, young axolotls under three inches will do well on brine shrimp, frozen, thawed, blood worms, and live black worms. Larger axolotls will do well on earthworms, um, my axolotls are kind of in an in-between stage with their size, so I feed them earthworms, but I cut them into pieces, and I'm feeding them with tongs right now. I will actually play a clip of this so you guys can see that. And that's gonna be it for this video. Um, you know, let, let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know if I missed anything. Like I said before, I really appreciate you guys checking out my channel, watching my videos, you know. I'm trying to blow this up quickly and uh, I just really appreciate you guys and we'll see you in the next video.